Here is my story. My wife and I have been married for three years before we got married. Cecilia and I had been dating for a year and a few months. I met her at a bachelorette party and she was the younger cousin of one of the guys I met there. His name was Andrew and he seemed to be a nice guy. I can't explain why, but something drew me to Cecilia. Although I didn't get to see her well, that night until the next day at the wedding, she and her cousin were longtime friends with the groom and they both flew in from another state to attend the wedding after the wedding. I tried to talk to Cecilia but she didn't seem to have my time. So I didn't disturb her anymore. Instead I got her cousin's contact from the WhatsApp group we belong to and asked him if he could share his cousin's number. And he did without asking for her permission first. Initially, talking to Cecilia seemed challenging, but I kept calling her and in the end, she agreed to have a date with me. I am a nurse. So I had a one-week leave. And I used the opportunity to go to the state she lived in and see her from getting to know her. I discovered she worked with a marketing organization and had been working there for three years. We both realized we were single as we talked more, but Cecilia was not ready for a relationship. Her ex-boyfriend dumped her for an older wealthier woman. And since then, she has been struggling with an abandonment mentality. However, I knew that no matter how she looked tough outside, she was just a delicate flower inside. And with the right amount of love care and attention, she would blossom and break through her barriers. So I did my best to shower her with all of that. Even as friends, I even got her cousin to talk to her for me so she could at least change her mind and be with me. And fortunately she was the kind of younger cousin that listened to her older cousin. So she gave me the opportunity. We got closer and I ensured I was there whenever she needed me because I loved her. The thing about me was that getting attracted to a particular girl did not happen to me every day. So when I saw Cecilia and liked her, I knew she was the one for me. So despite living in different states, I made sure I sent her flowers every week with a pack of her favorite chocolate until she said yes to me. When she said yes, I was literally the happiest man on earth. And as soon as I was due for my next leave, I hopped on the next flight to celebrate the beginning of our new phase of life together. I only had a few responsibilities as the house I lived in was willed to me by my father before his demise. So I didn't pay rent and could save more money. Even without being with her, I would send Cecilia money to take herself to a fancy restaurant, go shopping or even take her friends out on my behalf. I did everything possible to make her happy and not feel the distance between us until we married. After we married her office, transferred her to my state and we began living together as a couple. A few months after Cecilia moved in with me, I began to see so many things I had not seen when we were in our long-distance relationship. She was messy in the kitchen, messy in the bathroom and even messy in the bedroom. I complained about her habits every day until I eventually got tired. So I started cleaning up after her. She also picked a fence to almost everything I did. For example, if I cleaned the house and she walked into a wet floor, she would yell and cuss at me, which continued with almost everything. Then she stopped cooking and didn't care whether I ate instead. She bring home cooked food from any restaurant she visited and would microwave the food the following day as her breakfast before these changes. Cecilia loved cooking and wouldn't go a day without making fresh food. She hated warming food the next morning and she always woke up very early in the morning to cook before I woke up. But when this happened, she became a different person, became more distant and barely said a word to me. Even if she was at home on some days, it got so bad that whenever I tried to start a conversation, she would cut me off with the excuse that she had work to do or, or was too tired to talk after that. She didn't even let me touch her anymore. And a part of me began to suspect that she was seeing someone. But when I couldn't gather any evidence, I just let her be because I had heard people could change completely. After some years of marriage, her cold attitude toward me continued and she even started sleeping on the couch because of my non-stop pestering for her to do her wifely duties one day. I don't really remember what Cecilia did and I yelled at her, but instead of sorting it out as adults, like we used to, she picked a few 
few clothes and told me she was going to her friend's house and she threatened me to not call her friend if I didn't want to make things worse. So I didn't. Two days after Cecilia left, I was at home thinking about how things had gotten bad between Cecilia and me. When I got a call from a policeman, at first, I believed she parked wrongly or something. But I was told she had been involved in an accident and the police officer shared the location. So without wasting time, I rushed down there with my heart nearly falling into my stomach. The last thing I wanted was for something terrible to happen to my Cecilia on getting to the accident scene. Cecilia was lying on a stretcher and sobbing. Her hand and arms were bandaged and she sustained multiple injuries. But the guy that drove did not make it. So his body was already covered, not to sound insensitive. But I was glad Cecilia was okay. At that point, I know we had issues in the past, but I didn't want her dead or injured because I wanted us to work things out and go back to being the happy couple. We were, I tried to speak to her but she kept sobbing. And at the same time, the paramedic guy came to me and asked if I was her brother because he saw me standing by her bed. I told him I wasn't, but he insisted that he called Cecilia's brother and not me. It was funny because Cecilia was an only child. So when I asked him to show me the number, he called he showed me my number and explained that Cecilia saved my number as her brother on her iPhone. I was confused because that was the last thing I expected to hear. I also found out that the guy that died while driving, Cecilia was her boyfriend and they were on their way to another state for a vacation when the accident happened. Whatever was left of their clothes was in the trunk and I stood there unable to say a word. It was just too much to wrap my head around. At that point, I cried and asked Cecilia if it was true. And she nodded, she was still in tears because of her lover's demise and she could not even hide it. Even with our non-stop fights and distance, I could not even think of being with another woman apart from her. But she chose to hurt me like that to think that I was even planning to go over to her friend's house that evening so we could settle everything and she could come back home not knowing she was already on her way to a vacation with her lover. She was eventually taken to the hospital and stayed there for a few weeks. However, I only visited her once throughout her hospital state because I still could not believe she had cheated on me after all those years. And it was really tough for me. The one time I visited her, her friend convinced me to go and see her. But I ended up standing outside her room door. I just could not take myself in there to talk with her. Finally, when she fully recovered, her friend updated me again and I went to see her on the day she was discharged. What she didn't know was that when she was in the hospital, I contacted a lawyer and began to process our divorce papers. And on the day of her discharge, I gave them to her to sign, at least I had the decency to wait until she recovered. When she saw me, she began to cry, went down on her knees and asked me to forgive her so we could return to being one happy family. But I told her it wasn't impossible and handed her the divorce papers. When her friend saw the divorce papers, she began to beg me too. But I told her to stay quiet and mind her business. On the other hand, Cecilia continued to cry and she begged me to give her a second chance. But I dropped the papers and left. Then I warned her to not return to my house. I already called her cousin to tell him what Cecily had done, but he was too disappointed in her and wanted nothing to do with her. It turned out that the guy she was seeing was her colleague from work and her company had no relationship between colleagues' policy knowing that she was married. They fired her to protect their reputation. So after she left the hospital, she had no job to return to her friend, kicked her out and her cousin was far too embarrassed. So she had no one to support her. The last time I bumped into her friend, she told me, Cecilia was now struggling financially and she did crappy jobs just to make a living. It has been two years now and I still can't shake off the feeling that every woman out there might hurt me again. As Cecilia did, you mentioned that your ex-wife saved your number as her brother on her iPhone, which is absolutely terrible. This means she had been playing you for a very long time. I'm not a fan of long-distance relationships because of how pretentious both parties can be. Honestly, I don't think your wife loved you. She was just using you. 
You should have dug deeper when you noticed the changes and you should know better that people don't just wake up and change. She should have just ended things with you instead of cheating on you with her colleague. It's good that you found out the truth the hard way and you didn't allow her or her friend to convince you to change your mind. She didn't deserve a second chance and I'm glad you weren't weak in your decision making. Thank you for sharing your story with us. Now, let's get into the second story for today. My wife and I had been married for several years before I caught her red-handed cheating on me. Evelyn and I were actually fellowship members and she was gorgeous. Most times I would go to church on Sunday just to see her. However, we were not close friends until I discovered my aunt moved into her neighborhood, three houses after my aunt's house. To be precise as of that time, we were just teenagers and we weren't close friends like I said earlier because I wasn't exactly the kind of guy she would love to associate with. About four years later, my aunt died from cancer and I stopped visiting the neighborhood and everyone moved on with their lives. But I changed. Something happened to me that I can't share here and it pushed me to take a different direction in life. I became more serious about my dreams, education, career and spiritual life. Before this time, I was just a wild young man doing things my peer group did without thinking of the consequences of the future. Luckily I went to college, graduated and found a job. Then one day I bumped into Evelyn on my way back from work. It was a pleasant surprise and we exchanged contacts when we were free. Some days later, we hung out to talk about what had happened in our lives in the past years and mainly what had happened with me. After our first meeting, we had other hangouts together and slowly the love I had for her rekindled. And when I felt the time was right, I asked her out and she said, yes, we dated for two years and Evelyn and I never got intimate in the whole two years. I was a changed guy and didn't want her to think I was with her because of her body. Aside from that, my spirituality with God grew and I didn't want to jeopardize that too. So Evelyn and I promised to be celibate until marriage. Eventually we got married and got intimate on the first night of our wedding. But somehow I felt like Evelyn was not enjoying my husband's duties. No matter how much I did, she did not say a word to boost my ego or anything. She just stayed there like she was waiting for me to get over and done with which continued for almost three years. We wanted to have kids early because I didn't want to have a 15-year-old son at 50. But no matter how much we tried, she couldn't conceive which worried us. Meanwhile, there was this uncle of Evelyn whom she was so fond of her mother's younger brother. I had seen her around him several times as a teenager. So I believed he was her favorite uncle. This uncle of hers, Jesse used to visit us a lot after we got married and I didn't have an issue with that because both of our families were welcome to the house. They didn't need permission before coming because Evelyn was always at home. Evelyn's father was not in her life and I had the first-hand experience of growing up without a father or an uncle I could look up to. So I didn't want to ruin their moments. So most times I would go shopping for Jesse to show him that I appreciated how he looked after my wife and raised her to be the God-fearing woman she was or, or so I thought also on some nights, Jesse was allowed to sleep over at her place if he stayed so late. And I never said no, because I began to see him as my father all along. I never noticed anything unusual between the both of them. I knew they were close and almost every weekend, Evelyn would invite her uncle Jesse to come over. The only thing I complained about was how she told him about everything that was happening in our lives. There was even a time when Evelyn and I had a terrible fight and she called Jesse to come and pick her up and ended up spending the night there. After that was settled, we had no issue that would require her to leave the house anymore. Also, if I felt like Jesse was visiting too much and I barely had time to spend with Evelyn, I would suggest taking her somewhere, but she would end up inviting Jesse alone. So I stopped doing that throughout these two years. Nothing suspicious happened until one fateful Friday that Friday I was about to return from work when I found out that my 15-year-old car had broken down and I I had to call my usual car company to take it and fix it. So I took a taxi home. Our third anniversary was around the corner and I had already made plans to take Evelyn on vacation. 
it was meant to be our first, but I decided I could get her flowers in advance. So to do that, I asked the taxi driver to drop me at a flower shop, a street away from where we live. And I got the flowers and walked back home as I climbed my front porch. I heard strange sounds coming from my living room and I was shocked at first I believed Evelyn was watching adult movies, but it didn't sit well with me because it was unlike her and the sounds I heard sounded more natural. Finally, when I could not control my thoughts anymore, I pushed the door with force and when it opened my eyes saw the unbelievable. I didn't even know when the flowers fell out of my hands. When they saw me, they jumped up immediately and scrambled for their clothes. I screamed so loud and tears dropped uncontrollably from my eyes. That was the worst kind of heartbreak and betrayal I had ever gotten. I would never believe that Jesse and Evelyn could be a thing. And at that point, their closeness began to make sense to me. I understood why he was always around her and at my house and why she couldn't go a single day without calling him. It wasn't because he was like a father figure to her. But because they were cheating on me, Evelyn began to cry and started to beg me. But I was so disgusted and I didn't even want to look her in the eye. Evelyn eventually left with her uncle and they were so embarrassed at how the neighbors gathered to look at them. After she left, she tried to call me multiple times, but I blocked her and she didn't return to the house because of the embarrassment. Later, I discovered that she had been having an affair with Jessie since she was young, even while we promised to save ourselves for each other. Also, the whole time Jesse visited my home like it was his, they were cheating on me and I even bought him gifts to appreciate him and I treated him with so much love. Around the same time I resigned from my job. I contacted a lawyer who helped process the divorce papers. In the end, we divorced and went our separate ways. The wound I got from that heartbreak has not healed. Since then, today would have been our fourth anniversary. And I think it's better to share this here to lessen the burden I've carried for so long. I hate her so much for doing this. To me, it would have been way better if she didn't come into my life to hurt me like this. And I hope she gets her karma as for her family. I don't know what happened when her family found out and I don't care, but I hope everyone sees her as a monster. Your ex-wife was secretly having an affair with her uncle for almost three years under your roof and you didn't suspect a thing. You must have really trusted her. She should not have led you on if she knew she wasn't ready to stop her dirty acts. I guess this is why they say don't judge a book by its cover because you used her external appearance as a metric to measure her as wife material. I'm glad you kicked her out of your house and you made the right decision by ending things with her. Thank you for sharing with us. I hope you were able to heal from this. Thank you all for taking the time to listen to today's stories. If you enjoyed listening, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you haven't already, also comment below with your thoughts on what happened. If there is a story you would like to share with me about your own situation or someone else's, then please do not hesitate to contact me. Take care.